A recent study on climate change and rainforests focuses on identifying potential areas of the Amazon rainforest at risk of ecological tipping points. It is led by ecologist Dr. Bernardo Flores of the Federal University of Santa Catarina in Brazil, along with an international team of scientists, including Professor Richard Betts from the Met Office. I spoke to both Richard and Bernardo about their research. Firstly, here's Richard describing why this paper is so important. I think that paper is, is going to be really important because it's got such a, a, a large and diverse author team. So you literally have got a huge team of expert, experts with uh, different viewpoints, different fields of expertise. So it's one of these papers where getting everyone to agree on the paper is a huge achievement. Uh, so we have come to uh, 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 yeah, a very comprehensive uh, paper which brings together all our views and reconciles the differences of opinion that you might get there, the different viewpoints. So I think it's going to be a really powerful uh, paper. But it also it's kind of poignant for me because uh, I've been working on this idea of you know, potential tipping point in the Amazon, potential Amazon dieback for nearly 25 years now. So it started out as a model projection and very theoretical. And now the evidence that it exists uh, is getting stronger and stronger. We are seeing these droughts. So it's a genuine concern. Uh, so this is kind of the latest update on some work that we have been doing in the Met Office for, for 25 years. He then goes on to give a broader explanation about the critical role healthy forests have in moderating the climate and why rainforests are so effective. So all forests are important uh, for biodiversity uh, and for locking in carbon uh, and for uh, as a home for people as well. Many people around the world depend on forests for their livelihoods and their, and their, their ways of life, uh, especially those living traditional uh, lifestyles. Um, in terms of uh, other effects, though, the, uh, the tropical forests have an uh, an extra cooling effect, not only by taking up carbon, but also by promoting cooling through evaporation uh, and uh, promoting cloud cover above them. So there's a double warming, uh, double cooling effect uh, from tropical forests. Whereas in the northern regions, um, the forests in like northern Canada and northern Russia and Scandinavia, they take up carbon, but actually they have a, a local warming effect by darkening the land surface compared to the bright snow cover that you get in fields. So there's a bit of a trade-off uh, there. So it's not to say that forests in cold regions are bad. They're good in many respects, but they're not as effective in their overall impact on climate because of this albedo effect, whereas the tropical forests are doubly effective. But all forests are important for many other reasons. The relationship between carbon dioxide and a warming atmosphere is complex when understanding how tropical rainforests respond. Here's Bernardo Flores shedding light on the processes involved. Trees, they, they are expected to respond positively to the CO2, increase con the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. Because, so they use CO2 for photosynthesis. And when there is an increase in the concentration, it's expected to increase the efficiency of this photosynthesis. And then it's also expected that because of this, trees will be able to grow faster and uh, accumulate more biomass. So they can. this is expected to increase the resilience of the forest. So it, due to a disturbance, they could recover faster. They can become more... Um, rich in carbon, for example. So this is one, uh, one uh, thing that is expected. And there is another one, which is because of the increase, co increased concentration of CO2, trees are expected to increase for their efficiency, water use efficiency. So if there is a drought or if the climate becomes drier, trees will be, could, will probably be able to do more photosynthesis, absorb more carbon with less water. So these two things, because of these two mechanisms, it would be expected that tropical forests, I'm talking about tropical forests, could become more resilient due to increased CO2 concentration. So that's one aspect. But then the whole the story is a bit more complicated than this. Um, the so because of the the first one reason, they grow faster. Then there is that like rule in nature: if you grow faster, you die younger. And if you and if trees die younger, this means that they are going to live less and retain store that carbon for a shorter time. And then this carbon will go back to the atmosphere. 
So if they are dying faster, the trees in the forest, then they, the forest could not store more carbon, but maybe store less carbon. And that's the, there is evidence that this is happening. So trees, the forests are storing less and less carbon, possibly because they are dying more. And trees are dying more. So the, the tree mortality rates we see are increasing. So one response to rising carbon dioxide is the increase in rainforest water use efficiency. Here Bernardo explains what that means in terms of future rainfall and distribution across the Amazon. So moisture flows from the Atlantic Ocean and then it, it, it's, it's going to turn into rainfall in the Amazon. But once it, it, it rains, the forest, due to evapotranspiration, sends this moisture back and it can form more rainfall that will and then up to I think six or seven cycles uh, can happen within this transport from east to west uh, of, of rainfall recycling. When the forest increases its water use efficiency, it probably will reduce evapotrans its transpiration and it may reduce rainfall recycling. So by increasing water use efficiency, we may weaken the, the feedback between the forest and, and rainfall, and this could affect for negatively the resilience. So on the one hand, there are these mechanisms increasing the resilience, and on the other hand, there are mechanisms reducing the resilience. So it's a complicated story to see what's the aftermath of all this change. A scientific paper published in the journal Nature in 2021 found evidence that some parts of the southeast Amazon rainforest were emitting more carbon dioxide than absorbing, in part due to changes in land use such as logging, wildfires, as well as impacts from droughts and higher levels of heat. This transition from carbon sink to carbon source is described as a tipping point, and identifying this type of future tipping point is the basis of the study Bernardo and his team have been researching. When we address tipping point, we are talking about in this paper uh, about the possibility that the forest can die or, or change into a different ecosystem, which is different. So the forest in this case is still there. It can still be a forest, but it's, it's just emitting. It's not absorbing more carbon. It's emitting more, but it can stay as a forest. It will be a different forest probably. And we address this in the paper in uh, specifically because one of the things that we do is that we think of th different possibilities of ecosystems after they go through a tipping point, after the, uh, the forest shifts, what would it shift into? And we identify three different types of uh, ecosystems, main general types. And one of them is a degraded forest. So the forest can turn into a persistently degraded forest. They are not going to come back. A, it would be an alternative stable state but of, as a forest. And in our case, we were trying to see, understand the tipping point of the forest existing as a forest and it, how could, if, what could cause it to shift. And we see that the Amazon, in, in some parts in the north of the Amazon, in the south of the Amazon, and in parts of the center are getting significantly drier and they, in the next three decades, they can turn into a state where we call it bistable, which means that the forest, when it's disturbed, it may no longer be able to recover. And then it could be trapped in an open flammable state, not a forest anymore. And across most of the Amazon, uh, I think more than 80% of the Amazon, except for the West, extreme West, the forest is getting warmer, significantly warmer. And it's in some places in the central Amazon in the southeastern, it has already increased two degrees, up to two degrees in the last 40 years. And it could increase two degrees more in the next 30 years. So that together with the droughts causes a huge water stress in the system. And this is the, 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 the mean temperature. So, I mean, we say the mean temperature during the dry season when it's most important to but uh, then you have the extremes like this El Nino that we just uh, experienced. Uh, and so in, in the, under these conditions, uh, an extreme period of El Nino, for example, extreme event could be very disastrous and cause mass mortality, massive wildfires. 
parts of the forest of the Amazon system that were thought of as resilient, like the central Amazon and the western Amazon, are increase, increasingly exposed to these stressing conditions and to disturbances. Global greenhouse gas emissions are increasing global warming, and global warming is causing the climate climatic conditions of the Amazon to change in ways that are causing forests to die. Practical understanding of rainforest responses is a key component of any ongoing research. Deep in the heart of the Amazon rainforest, scientists are engaged in a groundbreaking experiment called Amazon Face. Here, they are elevating carbon dioxide levels over a small experimental part of the forest to mimic future scenarios, studying how rainforests respond to a warming world and the predicted greenhouse gas trends that could tip Earth's natural systems, such as the Amazon, into a different state. Richard Betts is part of the team. So in Amazon Face, uh, we are trying to understand how the forest responds to higher levels of carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere. So previous work done at smaller scales uh, and in laboratories and with small scale experiments has shown that photosynthesis is increased by high levels of carbon dioxide. So on the whole, plants grow more and take up carbon from the atmosphere. But in the real world and at larger scales, there might be limitations to this. Depends on how much nutrients there are in the soil, what the weather's doing, anything else, the environment, like uh, insects and diseases and so on. So the important thing about the Amazon face experiment, it's a real live, real world experiment at the size of part of a forest to see how CO2 affects the growth of forests.